So this is the so, talk of the town and it's brought to you by the Chamber of Commerce from Maple Ridge Pit Meadows. Our presenter today, uh, they are a great organization that stands alone. So they're our presenter and we're, we're spotlighting and featuring them today. So it's the Friends in Need Food Bank. And we'll just go to the next slide. It is Mary Robson, who is the director for Friends in Need Food Bank, who's going to just talk a bit. And we have a couple of people online too. So if there's questions, you can either put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask that way. And we will be recording this, which will be shared throughout our media channels as well. So go ahead, Mary. Hey, thank you and good morning. Thank you, Flory. We appreciate the spotlight being talk of the town, and I love the ad that you did. It's very, very good of you, um, especially during these times with the um, um, Friends in Need Food Bank being an essential service in the community. And this whole COVID thing has had um, us revamp all of our systems and how we do things. So maybe I'll just talk, talk a little bit about um, the COVID first, since that's you know, the forefront of everybody's minds these days. Um, when the COVID hit, we went into lockdown. We had to send home um, over 50% of our volunteers because they are seniors in their high risk category. And we managed to um, uh, keep things going with a skeleton crew, thanks to the Hope for Freedom Society, which is a recovery um, organization, uh, treatment organization, here, nonprofit, here in the community, they have a house. And the gentlemen in recovery have been coming in and providing our, our support volunteer network. So without them, we would not have been able to get through these times. Um, we are now just uh, bringing back uh, some volunteers who are not in the high risk category. So we are actually having some new volunteers join the team here. And um, uh, the, we continue to operate on the lockdown mode. So we, because of our footprint and the number of people that we can have inside the footprint for social distancing, we are limited. Um, we've been very fortunate to obtain additional space next door to Accent Glass. It's where Butch Hart's TV was. He happened to retire just at the time when COVID hit. So we were able to take over his space, which allowed for the social distancing for some of our volunteers to do the date checking, sorting, and then the preparation of the pre-packed hampers that we do. So that, that was just a godsend to have, have that space open up. And the uh, family of Accent Glass have been wonderful in, in providing that space to us at a very reasonable cost. Then moving on from that, we also had to, um, um, once the food chain was functioning again, we had to stock up on inventory. And this is through Food Banks BC and Food, Food Banks Canada. The COVID funding that we've been getting, we, we've been directed to keep our stock up, make sure we have an inventory. Uh, so at the beginning of COVID, we were expecting to see an, uh, quite a large increase in the client registrations and the need for food security. That didn't happen because of the CERB. So we did see some increase in, in families um, of, um, the three to four category. And we saw a decrease in the single uh, male population, the clients who are single males. So that sort of made a difference for them. We are now beginning to anticipate another demand for uh, food security with the ending of CERB. So we have our shelves stocked, we're prepared. Um, we've um, been able to secure additional storage space Again, through Friends of the Food Bank, they've been very, very supportive and cooperative. Uh, so we've got our, um, a good supply of inventory in our non-perishable goods. Um, then following that, we, in one of the changes that we had to do with our system, we could not allow clients to come into the food bank anymore. So it's a lineup process. We have tried to fast, fast stream it by providing pre-packed bags of all goods. So they get their pre-packed hamper once a month. And then on a weekly basis, they can come in and get a pre-packed bag of extras, which could be condiments or, or crackers or, you know, just any other kind of food that is not included in their monthly hamper. And then also weekly, they get a pre-packed bag of perishables. 
Um, so this is worked out very well. We have, um, we like to call it the drive through where people who have the vehicle when they come to the food bank, they still have to wait in line to get their position. But then once they're up next, then they can pull their car up to the drive through table and, um, and load their, their, their food right into the, into the vehicle. So those are some of the changes that we were faced with because of COVID. And we are anticipating, um, and we're ready for it if it does happen, an increase in, in our um, need for food security in this community. But one of the things I'd like to talk about now is the Perishable Food Recovery Program. This is a facility that we received a grant for and we opened up um, a year ago in June of 2019. And within the first year, we did over a million pounds of food in that facility, which this is food that has been recovered from local grocery stores. And we have um, been able to secure a small 1,200 square feet behind the Trevor Linden building and that little alley off of behind the Bell Locksmith and the tea shop. So it's centrally located, it's just perfect. Our vehicle goes out and picks up from, from the grocery stores and brings back the totes full of the food that they would normally be throwing out. And we sort that according to what is good for human consumption, what is good for farm feed, and then what goes to compost. So within the million, the first year, and this could be from June 2019 to the end of May 2020, we did um, over a million pounds of food. And to date, to the end of July, we've now done 1.2 million pounds of food through that little, pro, through that little uh, warehouse space that we have. And of that, 55% of it has gone back to human consumption. 33% has been used for the farm feed and the farmers love it. It's really proving to be quite a valuable um, source for them, uh, for their animals to get this fresh feed. And it saves on them having to buy the pellets and the hay and the everything else. So, um, and they also look after the recycling of any of the containers that they take that the food may be contained in. And then 12% has gone to compost. And again, that's um, not going to the landfill. This is going to the organization we deal with, the, the um, revolution. And they take whatever we provide in the clear plastic bags and that goes into the compost, which they, um, then um, reuse in their organic farming program. So then at the end of it, um, after, at the end of the year, we realized that we had saved over a million kilograms of CO2 emissions. And when I share that with the cities of Maple Ridge and Pitt Meadows, they understand that this is a significant number in what we're doing in this community as far as CO2 emission reduction. Um, so it's not just benefiting our clients, it's not just benefiting our farmers, but we are doing good within the community, within the city of Maple Ridge and Pitt Meadows. Um, so that's something that we're very proud of, and we are now in an expansion mode, and I'm happy to say that we went from the four original Save-On food stores, and we now have, um, well, we always had thrifties involved, but now they are actually part of the, the program instead of just dealing with the food bank directly. But they came on board for food recovery back in 2017 when we first kicked off the program. And we now have no frills and we're working on Freshco. So we hope to bring other grocers into the program um, by the end, end of September. I'd like to say that we'll have them all, hopefully. Um, one of the other things about, um, because of this COVID, I'll just go back to it for a moment. We have seen a, a reduction in the amount of food coming in in donations. So here at the warehouse at the main branch, we measure, we weigh all of the food coming in, whether it be from the front of the store donations that people have made, whether it be being, people bringing it to our back door, everything gets weighed and through the larger uh, suppliers. Um, through the larger suppliers, food suppliers, um, everything gets weighed. We are, we've only received uh, 445,000 kilo, kilograms uh, for January to August of this year, which is down considerably from what we've seen in the past. So that tells us that the food chain supply has been affected. Um, we saw a huge drop when COVID first hit 
and now we we're starting to see some normality again so hopefully that uh hopefully that doesn't change um then let's just talk briefly about some of the programs that we do i'm happy to say that the seniors food bank will be opening up the last monday in september senior center is to go, going through a soft opening reopening now um, it's just starting this week and then we'll have the food bank for the seniors up and running again by the last week of september um, we've been maintaining the Katesy food bank i'm so proud of what they did because they went into a lockdown mode as well when COVID hit and they've maintained their food bank so we've done a little bit of a different system with them but it's working very well and their team of volunteers down there have just been extraordinary and um, then we have our Pitt Meadows Food Bank, which operates out of the Grace Community Church, and they didn't miss a beat. They've done a wonderful job in maintaining social distancing and food safe handling and distribution to the clients down there in Pitt Meadows. And then our food bank here, the main branch here at Maple Ridge. Um, so we, we are starting to see a bit of an increase, as I say, but not uh, overwhelming. Uh, but we feel we're prepared and we are um, the providers of food to the wider community, working with other organizations, nonprofits, service, service groups who provide um, uh, community meals, Salvation Army, community services. We work with all of the outreach teams, uh, Rain City, uh, Alouette Addictions. So um, I think we've established ourselves as a, a strong provider of food in this community as the hub. And um, we have some wonderful partnerships and relationships within the community. And that's all about all I've got to say. Thank you, Mary. That was great information. Um, so what can people do if they want to get involved? Like, what are your primary needs right now as far as involvement? So if we're sending this out and you know, people say, okay, what can I do? What do you want to hear or what do you want to see from from your community right now the one of the things is um the all of our food drives were cancelled so um the bc thanksgiving food drive which was started by the latter-day saints church um, is no longer restricted to just their church but they've gone to a wider spread of community or uh, groups participating um, and this this is a food drive that happens throughout the province. So our, our food drive here in Maple Ridge, it happens on the west side of Maple Ridge and some neighborhoods in Pitt Meadows. Um, Jason Nagy, who is the coordinator, is having a tough time finding volunteers to adopt a route. And it's, it's all going to be um, a social distancing and, and COVID safe, where they just drop off um, a donation bag for at the household and then the household will will um, donate whatever non-perishable foods they have and please everybody check the date before you donate um, i appreciate that people like to empty their cupboards but if it's expired food then we just have to get rid of it and it becomes an additional cost to the food bank so that food drive is going to be the first significant food drive that we will have and i'm hoping that we will have more at christmas time so those food drives are very significant and it's a small way that community businesses and partners um, families can schools can participate in helping the food bank and figuring out your own way to do it with social distancing and and be, uh, in a safe uh, covid manner following protocols um, we still need that food and unfortunately the food drives that would have happened for the spring and summer and we're all canceled. So we're very excited to have the BC Thanksgiving food drive going ahead. So I encourage all businesses to just, even amongst your staff, whatever little food drives or competitions you can do for non-perishable foods, we will, we will provide the boxes, the list of the most wanted items and anything else we can do. Great. We'll, we'll see what we can do there for sure uh, to participate on our end as well. And the school meal and snack program. So that is oh, looking yes. for donations. Yes, thank you. I, I skipped over that one, didn't I? That is um, okay. starting up. We've actually just uh, received our first order. Um, we do buy quite a bit of inventory. And again, we've had to revamp it. So we're now looking at individual servings that are 
individually wrapped. So the, we've had to remove some items from our, our shopping list uh, for the schools that, that provide these school meal snack programs. And we did deliver to every school in the district last year. Um, and it was benefiting over 2,000 students. So it's um, something that is very dear to our heart and we want to see it continue. And we're just revamping a little bit. But yes, we are fundraising for it because it does run a budget of about 80,000 a year, not counting the milk and eggs. And this is just for basic snacks of the yogurts, the, the cheese strings, the um, in, now we're going to individual milk cups. Um, so it, granola bars, that type of thing. So anything that can um, be given out to the children, individual por portions, individually wrapped is what we're looking at right now. So you're looking for donations of those individual portions to come in as well as donations for funds? Exactly. Which can all, yeah. And that can all be, if we go back, we have our your contact information, so we'll just confirm that's right uh, with your website. So we'll go back to that first slide. And this is, um, you can do it online through the Canada Helps. Um, it's very simple, just go to our website or even on our Facebook page, and there's a direct link there to the Canada Helps. And I think the top uh, uh, donation uh, category is the school meal snack program right now. Okay. Were there any questions for Mary? Like I said, she's our, our presenter. We're, we're spotlighting her today, so we won't have a presenter following up uh, or our next presenter. So if there's any questions for Mary, you can either put them into the chat or unmute yourself. Okay, well, it looks like you covered everything or we covered everything so everyone knows uh, what to do, how to get in touch and how to help out. Uh, we do have a, f oh, very nice presentation. Thank you, no questions. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, we do have a couple other business owners. So if anybody else would like to speak to their business, you can unmute and tell us about yourself if you like. And Flory, I thank you very much for this opportunity to share what the friend the need is doing yes absolutely. and with your permission i'll leave yes thank you very much mary if anybody does have questions coming up we'll, we know how to get in touch with you and, and we'll Wonderful. follow up with you as far as participating as well so thanks very much take care and have a good day you. you too okay did anyone else want to speak about their business Any questions regarding the chamber, talk of the town, our member spotlight, any of our programs that we've got going on right now and how to participate or, you know, your membership value, anything like that? Uh, I guess it's, you know, a Tuesday after a long weekend, so everyone's kind of quiet right now. <laughs> so I think with that, we will sign off. Like, We've always said too, this will, is recorded and it will go out on our social media. So if you need any information uh, for Friends in Need Food Bank, uh, you can see it there and we will have the links and whatnot in our newsletter as well. You're very welcome, Heather. Thank you for attending. And again, we're here for any questions uh, to our members, to our communities. So please reach out. Our information is up on the screen there and you know we're happy to help so all right with that we will sign off and take care everyone and we'll connect in whatever way that may be soon <laughs> thank you